Hey guys, uh, so let's get started. Uh, welcome to our talk on, um, uh, this will be a quick over, a project overview basically of Horizon, um, a quick update on what we've been recently doing, uh, what we've been doing in, in Pike so far, and what we kind of hope to accomplish in the uh, upcoming releases. Um, I'm Rob, I'm the PTL uh, currently for Horizon and was the PTL two cycles back as well. Um, pass me over to Dave. And I'm David Lyle, I was the uh, PTL for um, an ungodly amount of time, uh, about two and a half years uh, before Rob took over, um, and been with the project for about four and a half years. So uh, this is a n new uh, track at the summits or forums uh, that the foundation wanted to start again. So it's just a it's a project overview to kind of give an, a, a touch point for people using Horizon or interested in Horizon, uh, an idea of what, what we've done, where we're going. Um, and so they kind of give us a little bit of a format, so we're going to follow along with that um, and then kind of deviate at points where we feel necessary. Um, but just a, you know, level set, what is Horizon? Uh, obviously, it's the, it's, hopefully you know that by now, but just to make sure, um, it's extensively uh, unified web-based uh, user interface for OpenStack. Um, what we try to do is provide a consistent user interface uh, and support for and this is a trouble word, but the core services, uh, basically enough services to launch a VM uh, inside OpenStack. Uh, so th to do that, there's a lot of interdependency, and Horizon tries to give the base support for those services. And then everything else is left to extensibility. So we have a, an extensive plugin interface. Um, there's literally, I don't know, I'd say there's 50 or 100 Horizon plugins in the wild. Um, some are officially part of OpenStack, some are just posted on GitHub is, uh, I don't know, one-offs. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of support out there. But that's what we try to do. We try to provide a consistent user interface so you can plug in and, and put your the content, be it that you're on a service team, say Ironics, a, uh, Magnum, so you can include Content Horizon. But we just want to make sure that we have that, that touch point where you can plug in. Uh, the project background, so Horizon's actually been around since almost the beginning of OpenStack. Uh, I think the first commits went in during the Behar cycle. Um, it was officially added to the integrated release in Essex. Um, and then the contribution levels have gone up and down over time, but the last release, at least 136 people had a, had a commit in uh, the Okada cycle. As far as adoption, uh, according to the user survey, we get 89% of production or, or com combination of production and test clouds. Um, that's, that's basically up there as high as any of the service, or most of the services. There's a couple, Neutron and Nova, I think, are a little slightly above that. Um, but it's on a par with, say, Cinder. So it's, it's, it's out there. It's, it's, it's pretty ubiquitous. Um, and people use it for different reasons, uh, for, you know, onboarding or for, you know, troubleshooting, status. That sort of thing. Uh, so now we're going to cover what we did in Akata. Uh, so Akata was a little bit of a short cycle since we kind of reset the summit format. So it, we have a, uh, we still got quite a bit accomplished, but this, these are the high points. So we did add Keystone to Keystone Federation. Um, so if you're if you are using Keystone to Keystone Federation, you can, we have support for that in Horizon. Essentially, you would you would log in. It would get, you would log into one Keystone endpoint, and once you're in there, you'll get a you would get a drop down. Uh, basically provides you all the other Keystone endpoints. So much in the way that you can filter based on region um, and project, you could also filter on your, which Keystone endpoint you want to talk to. Um, we do a lot of filtering in Horizon just for performance reasons. So we don't try to give you the overall view of what your cloud looks like just because the API overhead to do that is, is quite expen extensive. Or expensive. And then, um, if we do piece together that picture and you try to do an action, it gets very confusing about what actually you're operating on. So we've basically gone to the, and this has been ever since we got multi-region support, but just try to filter it down so you're looking at one coherent unit. Um, and again, so Keystone to Keystone Federation would be the, you know, the first level of filtering. You're going to look at this Keystone endpoint, and then we'll start providing you the regions under that. Um, we did. A, we actually did work with Keystone team quite a bit on Okada. Um, we, we've actually gone to a, a kind of a focus. Uh, we, have re, we, we had regular meetings during the Okada cycle with the Keystone team, uh, just to 
try to address a lot of pain points. Um, and another example on here is just the uh, token revocation. So it used to be every time you switched to projects, we'd, we'd go to Keystone and revoke the token. Uh, it turns out that that's, that's highly problematic. <laughs> uh, we, were trying to, we were trying to keep, um, keep the number of tokens down. Uh, but essentially, uh, if you had a long-running project, or I mean a long-running task, uh, it's detrimental, obviously, for us to go revoke that token. So, um, and Keystone ends up doing that on its own over time anyways. Um, so we just re completely removed that based on feedback, essentially. Um, we also had, um, we improved uh, federation support overall. Uh, this is another Keystone thing. Uh, well, this was working with the Keystone team. So uh, the way they were doing federation, um, they were mapping us to a dummy domain, which basically meant as soon as, is, is a, a fictitious domain. And so as soon as you logged in, you couldn't really do anything. <laughs> um, so we work with the Keystone team. Now you actually get mapped to a, a, a real domain. Um, and so your views will actually come up properly. Um, an ongoing thing that we've been working on is performance improvements. So we continue to make progress on that in the Okada cycle. Um, we have a long-running transition where we're trying to move co more content to AngularJS uh, to give you more responsive pages, be able to do a lot more async data grabs. Um, and in, in the Okada cycle, we got a couple panels completed. So we had glance for the image views, and that's, that's actually what the screenshot here is. Um, and, and Swift support as well. Uh, so what you get out of this is, is a much faster interface because uh, we can parallelize the calls. Um, and then you can, we can also do nicer things like the, the drawer that you see on here that you wouldn't see in a traditional horizon table uh, where we can, that's basically the contents of the detail view, but we've, we've put it in the table so you don't have to bounce around to so many views to get the information you're looking for. Um, the detail view still exists. You can, you can bounce to it and we won't actually go re-grab all the data again. So in the old Django format, if you click the detail view, we'd go make a new API request, populate that data, and then if you went back to the table view, uh, we'd go repopulate all of that again too. And with the Angular rise views, then you can do that bouncing back and forth without having to, to make the expensive data call, uh, API calls every time. So that's an ongoing process. Uh, and Rob will talk about further work as we go forward, um, where we're going with that. Um, but we're, we're pretty excited about making further progress on that. Um, again, in performance improvements, we also added support for a feature we call admin filter first, but basically you can specify views where you want, you want to force the data, or force the user to filter data uh, before you, you display them anything. So uh, good examples of this where you'd want, maybe want to use this is, is a user view in identity. So if you, if you went into Keystone or, or we call them the identity views, but if you're looking at the identity, identity views, trying to show you a list of 10,000 users, well, it's not even possible in Keystone, uh, the way they've constructed it, but it's also not very useful. Um, showing you, um, because basically we would show you the first 100 of those users and then you have 9,900 you know, 9, left. Um, so that's not a good way to access the data. So uh, it's fine on a, on a test cloud or a token cloud. It's, it's a great way to, I mean, to, render all the data, um, but once you get into a larger scale cloud, it's, it's nice to be able to, especially in the admin views, which is where we really targeted this, so people that have cross-project visibility, uh, we want you to, we, we want to allow operators to tell the users, you know, you really need to filter this first, so uh, we have a lot of API uh, level filtering uh, at the tops of the tables, uh, you can uh, see it, the, at least in this one, click here for filters, but uh, and then you can, you can qualify the data. You can say, uh, you know, I want, a, uh, I want an image with the name this, or I want an image uh, uh, for this architecture, or things like that. So we provide that filtering, and again, that'll get, you to the, that'll get users to the data that they're looking for a lot quicker. Um, another thing that we added was prof profiler support. So this is not enabled by default. It's actually in our contrib directory. But you can turn on profiling uh, in, in Horizon, um, and this allow you to see where you're spending the time on API calls. Um, so it, ac it actually will uh, track each of the API calls and the time for the response and, and to get to the rendering part. Um, and we've actually used that to validate some, some performance improvements that we made in Okada, or actually this cycle, I think, as in Pike, uh, around doing more threading, at, even on the Django side, just to try and get um, 
get the pages to render faster. Um, and we continue to make lots of UX improvements or attempt to make a lots of UX improvements. Uh, some examples you can see in this view is we split out some of the, we used to have a, a lot of information buried in a, in a panel called uh, secure, access. access and security, which was very cryptic and it was buried under compute. And the, the interesting things that were there were your, your key pairs and your API access and things like, how would I go get my openrc.sh? Uh, um, and so not only we, kind of done away with that little panel uh, of buried stuff and split them out into to higher level things. But we have also added, uh, you see on the admin, the user menu on the right hand side, um, we've added links to just go ahead and download my OpenRC file. Um, that's actually a very popular use case for Horizon is I open up Horizon, <laughs> I just want to grab enough info, I want to grab the data so that I can uh, use the command line more efficiently. Um, <laughs> So we made it, we we're trying to make it as accessible as possible. Um, and we just continue to, uh, you know, the, the table drop downs and things like that are, are things where we continue to try and, and make UX improvements. And I'll let Rob talk. Cool. So um, the, the themes that we've been kind of going with with these releases have been pretty consistent for the last couple of releases, and they are continuing along the same kind of lines uh, for, for Pike and Queens, really. Uh, where the major focuses are on uh, scalability, so kind of at what, what, what's like the upper limit of how you can operate Horizon. So not addressing like hundreds of instances, but like thousands and tens of thousands um, in an efficient manner. Um, and the user experience, so like how quickly can you do stuff and how accessible is the information. Um, so things like splitting out these panels to make them more discoverable, uh, putting sort of key actions that people are commonly using up in the, uh, the uh, user menu drop down, um, that all kind of comes under the banner of user experience. So you know, how quickly can you interact with something? Um, the, the, the admin filter first thing was quite a, another good example of that, uh, where rather than say you hit a panel like your admin, you go to like admin and then instances and, and the Django panel will instantly try and load like 10,000 instances. That's not useful if you're just trying to look at a subset. So the whole, like the idea with the filter first stuff is that it would, for, it would not load any data and you would immediately put your filter in. Because if you're an admin, you don't want to look at a list of like 10,000 instances, that's not useful information to you. You're gonna have a rough idea of what you're looking for and what you, know, what you want to operate on. Um, yeah. So, so far in Pike, uh, we've added micro version support. Uh, so far, we've got support for, we have, have kind of a, a generalized solution and uh, specifically support Nova and Cinder micro versions. Um, there's already quite a few patches out uh, in Horizon that are building on top of this and will only, uh, will only make certain calls um, if you've got the correct supported micro versions. Um, going forward, this means that you'll be able to operate on uh, different versions of Nova and not worry about things breaking when they change their uh, API calls. Um, and also navigation improvements following on from the last cycle, we've made uh, changes to the admin dashboard, which was becoming really quite overloaded because we just had like this one top level um, system panel group. So we've started splitting that down to match the uh, project level dashboard. Um, so it's now divided up into kind of compute volumes, things like that. Um, and we also broke out the volume stuff because a lot of that was all buried under one panel with like five tabs. Uh, so again, it was getting pretty overloaded if you just had one, like if you just wanted to look at uh, volume backups or something like that, you were having to navigate to the volumes thing, bring up uh, a list of your volumes and wait for that API call to go through and then go through to look at your backups. So it was, uh, it was really kind of slowing things down. So a lot of this navigation stuff is about letting the user get to the information they need faster without having to go through unnecessary API calls. Um, continuing for Pike, we've got a few kind of bigger ticket items that are, um, that are ongoing. The overview panels for quite a while have been fairly problematic and um, really for anyone operating on larger clouds, we, most of the feedback we get is that they either change their default panel so they log into something that's uh, less heavy or they just disable the overview panel um, um, entirely. Uh, one of the most kind of obvious things you might notice is that 
Uh, if you've just installed Horizon and not customized it, you'll log in. The default panel is overview, um, and especially if you're in an admin role, it will then try and get quotas and other usage information across every project that you are an admin of. Um, and especially when some of the projects don't really use the admin role properly, this basically means that if you've got an admin role, it will try and retrieve usage information for every project. Uh, this is pretty problematic, so we're working on, um, oh, I just realized that URL's wrong, sorry about that. Um, but we're working on the, uh, improving the overview panel so that it'll pop up, give you an empty view, and then uh, populate the information as the API calls return. Uh, building on, to uh, well, really uh, kind of very, very linked to that is uh, improving the quota support. So another kind of problematic part of Horizon um, is that when you, uh, when you do quota lookups at the moment, the current logic will try and uh, retrieve every quota at once. So you'll, try, you'll, um, you'll do something like go onto the, the routers panel, and uh, it'll try and look up uh, limits and things like that in Neutron, uh, but also do all the Nova quota stuff at the same time. Um, again, this is an incredibly heavy API call, and this will happen on a lot of different views uh, because we try and do things like proactively uh, disable actions if you've already reached a quota. You don't want people trying to launch an instance and spending 10 minutes filling out a, a form only to find that when they hit submit, it says, no, you're at your quota. It's just a waste of time. So yeah, we, always, we already try and proactively prevent that, but it, the, the logic's pretty heavy, and that needs to be uh, modularized so that it, you know, we're doing this in, in much smaller units. Uh, and finally, uh, improving kind of some of the core service support. Again, core is a bit of a questionable term to use, but we do still support um, Keystone, Nova, Glance, Swift, Neutron, and Cinder. And Heat. Hmm? Heat. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. So, yeah, we, we've got a couple of uh, big patches out at the moment to add uh, improved Neutron API support um, for, for parts of Neutron that we don't currently have uh, Horizon panels for. So, uh, moving on to Queens. The release themes here, um, for those who are kind of paying keen attention, will notice that they're exactly the same. Um, just want to continue focusing on the scale that Horizon can address and, um, and you know, uh, improving the user experience, so it, working on discoverability. Uh, these are key things which we kind of, um, depending on the, the, this, the pace at which we can address these things, they might hit either Pike or Queens, but I um, wanted to be cautious with this and not promise too much. So the, um, the, uh, the instances uh, work, as I've mentioned before, um, instances becomes quite a difficult panel to deal with because it's, it's one of the highest uh, kind of volume uh, pieces of content that Horizon will ever talk to. Um, you know, it, it's pretty common to have thousands or tens of thousands of items potentially being loaded on there, um, which is you know, much, much more different to something like your glance images list, which will probably never reach more than a few hundred items. Um, so we want to port that fully over to Angular. And, and there's a, there was a big work in progress patch, but unfortunately, the contributor who was overseeing that um, has left Horizon now. Um, so we, we need to pick that up again. Uh, but there's a, a, big prog a big patch there to move that over to Angular to improve the filtering and uh, improve pagination support. Um, and finally, we want to um, continue on the uh, quota work and uh, make it completely pluggable. Uh, so one thing we've been asked for a lot, especially by the other networking services um, like um, Octavia and things, is, is to uh, allow us, uh, allow them to have uh, quota hooks, basically. So if, if, if we have our overview pages that give like a, an overview of all your quotas that, that, you're, that you can view, uh, you know, they want to be able to hook into that and, and produce graphs and things at, you know, relatively simply without having to kind of hack the, um, the Python code behind it. Back over to Dave. All right. <clears throat> so here's where we ask for your help. Uh, so <laughs> I just put a couple of charts on here to kind of uh, give an overview of, of you know, the trajectory of the project. So the number on the, on the x-axis is just the, the number of the releases. So this goes all the way back to the Austin release all the way up through. I, I put numbers on here for, for Pike, but it's still a work in progress. But um, as you can see uh, from the generalized trends, we're 
we're losing contributors. Uh, I mean, I think this is a common issue across <laughs> OpenStack, so it's probably a common story you'll hear. But um, we're losing contributors and reviewers, and it's, it really slows down the pace that we can make, the, make improvements to Horizon. Um, so it's a great time to get involved. Uh, if you have things that you'd like to see in Horizon, it's a great time to do that. You won't, uh, there won't be a lot of people pushing back on you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but we also need feedback from operators and users more. We, I mean, we love to get any feedback that we can from anybody that ha has an association with Horizon, uh, whether you're setting it up, and, and it would be much better if, we, you know, if I had this option to how I could set it up, or uh, I always run into this issue. You know, provide a bug, provide, or, you know, reach out to us. We had our IRC names on there, but, uh, you know, Launchpad, file a bug. Um, we'd love to get that feedback. Um, you know, we're, we're doing core things to try and improve Horizon overall, but we always address, we always try to address, you know, user problems, operator problems, uh, that, you know, those are our highest priority. Yeah, and it, it's kind of worth mentioning that we don't, um, I know that some of the other IRC channels are, are very much like dev only, no support help. Horizon's never been like that. Uh, we're really quite active, uh, considering how many kind of people have left recently. But we, you know, we, I can't promise we'll answer everything within five minutes. But normally, if you leave a question on there, within an hour, someone will get back to you. Um, and we, you know, we're always answering questions on there. Um, or if IRC doesn't work, um, you know, feel free to grab my email off like Launchpad or something like that and, and just email me like feedback or questions directly. I'm happy to answer things um, if, you know, if that supports, if that, um, if that works better for people. Because I know sometimes IRC can be troublesome for various reasons. And, and I'll beat the drum again for reviews. Reviews would be great. Um, we're, at the, we're at the point where we have core reviewers. We'll, we'll approve patches with one core reviewer's uh, vote. Um, so the plus ones make a lot of difference. Get, growing new cores would help immensely as well. Uh, I mean, it's we're, we're not we're not on dire straits, but it, it would certainly it would certainly help in the health of the project if we could get more people involved. Um, so that's what we had for for content for the uh, Horizon. Um, we'd be happy to take any questions you may have. There's a mic up at the front as well, so if you want to. Um, if you have any questions, please step up just so that the recording can catch the questions. Nope. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.